I'm glad you guys could make it. So, in case you don't remember, my name is Vicki, community education coordinator here at North Carolina Zoo. Behind the camera, we have Steve helping me today. It's just two of us, so we're trying to do everything. So, if you drop the ball, <laughs> can't blame anybody else today. Oh, <laughs> so, we're going to learn today. He's pretty cool. Oh, I should have. I just didn't dress properly. You got to get, you look, you look dressed to me. Camouflage. You forgot your camouflage? Yeah. I didn't bring camouflage. I don't own any camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not under. <laughs> All right, so art of camouflage. So we're going to talk about camouflage. So what is camouflage? So remember, put in that chat. What is camouflage? What do you guys think? And if you see me looking over here, that's where my computer is. So <laughs> <laughs> trying to look at Natalie says, right how here. animals hide, disguised oh, from Surprise. Liam Surprise. and Joseph. Right, right, absolutely. So it's how they hide, they disguise themselves. Disguise. Good word, I like disguise, that's a good one. Absolutely, okay, next question. Why, why camouflage? What does that do for the animal? Hmm. How does it help them? This is the better way of saying that, so. How does being blending in or to stay safe says Vicky to stay safe from Where is it? mainly used by prey animals Charlie suggests or Charles suggests make them seem invisible Joe nice to predators she added and so did Charles to predators right so avoiding it, predators yes right so avoiding predators actually staying safe how about survival oh helping you to survive. But that also Thank you, goes Philip. to the flip side. So you talked about just mostly prey items, but let me know what I'm holding here. What animal is this? Mm. I was trying to hide and camouflage behind. <laughs> what animal is that? Cheetah or leopard from Philip? Right. Absolutely. Cheetah from Natalie, cheetah from Liam and Joseph. It is. Well, you're very close. This is a leopard, right? Nice. And, you know, and yeah, so it is a Hi, Joey. So, but they have good camouflage too because they don't want their food to see them, mm. right? Because they want to survive. So it's all about survival. Either helping you not be food or helping you to catch your food, right? So it's all about survival. That's what the name of the game of camouflage is. And there's different ways animals do camouflage. Sometimes the one category we're going to start with, we call it active, or excuse me, color matching. Woo, <laughs> color matching sounds like you're painting your house <laughs> kind of thing. But Basically, it means, what do you think that means? What is color matching? So what colors would the animals be? It says matching. <laughs> what would they be matching? My wife matches her outfits every day. There you go. <laughs> I'll just, I'm gonna rock this over here. Let's look at these guys. I'm sure you've met them many times. Maybe not these two particular Jeez. ones because we have hundreds and. <laughs> the colors of the ground and the water, there so it says Philip. Yeah. So color matching. So our Madagascar hissing cockroaches here. Yep. Kind of have those browns, kind of blacks, same color as kind of the ground, because that's where you'd find your Madagascar hissing cockroaches. They're down on the ground in the forest, where it's brown. The dirt's brown. The dead leaves are brown. Right. And lots of different shades of brown. So having lots of different colors. Now, when I got these guys out earlier, they're nice and hissy. So let's see. Uh oh. Let's see. I told them to keep their angry cells. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I think he's sad. There it out. Oh, he's feisty. He's a mover. Maybe they just kind of chill and hang out in your hand. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that's close up. I'm ready for my Whoa. video. <laughs> so all those nice browns and blacks and kind of the shape too, mm -hmm. right? It's a good way to blend in and color match your surroundings. So that way you can hide. You can avoid being eaten, mm -hmm. all right? Do you think a lot of animals would want to eat this animal? <laughs> it's going to, to change my emotions. It's about some, right. some people talking about some chameleons earlier. Oh, yeah. kind of conversation they were having. Oh, cool. Some people say no, people want to eat. Some people say yes, animals want to eat those. Right. <laughs> a lot of animals, actually even humans. There are some humans in Madagascar 
But this would be a nice, tasty source of protein. Yep. Not me. <laughs> yeah, not me. Us. Not me. Maybe not even covered in chocolate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it. That's funny. So awesome. So very good color matching at our from our Madagascar Hissy Cockroaches. You notice know, I'm trying to go through, I'm going to try and go through these quickly as I can. Although I do like to talk, as you guys know. <laughs> so not Miss, go. not Miss Nikki. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, because at the end, I've got a fun little PowerPoint. We're going to see if we can find some animals. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, let's see who the true artists are in camouflage. So, <laughs> so, any other animals that you can think of that color match? Any things that we have around here? I see these guys a lot. Oh, neat. Right. This will give you. Ah, <laughs> it's a cheating hint. Oops. Yeah, deer says Philip. Right. Or Pink says deer, right? Yep. Oh yeah, browns. Absolutely. Owls had uh, is Charles with counter shading. Right. Bear we'll says bear says Mecca and Joey. Yeah. So a lot of your browns of the trees and the forests and the grasses, and of course, if you live up where it's a lot snow and ice oh that's my favorite want to be this color match right yes um uh, yeah we came in a little bit late but i like the question it, natalie asks is there any other types of hissing cockroaches it's a neat question i don't think so either i don't i believe i believe the madagascar hisser is the only ones that make that kind of right. distinctive noise yeah nice question though natalie thank you they're one of the few animals that Kind of make how they make their noises, you mm -hmm. know, uh, especially with the insects, you know, because they're blowing air out through those those the tubes in the back side of the right. body, those holes in the back, and they're forcing out through those tubes. Whereas a lot of animals kind of rub things or, mm -hmm. or uh, animals, I should say, insects <laughs> do that. So good question, right? That's cool. All right, so color matching, pretty easy, easy one. The next category is active camouflage. Active. And you mentioned, something you didn't mention earlier, this guy, right? Oh, you guys were talking about him earlier today. Yeah. I saw some of the chats between you all. Right. So they can change, physically change their coloration. That it time. is, it Charles and Philip. Nice job. Right. Chameleon. Absolutely. I just love this. This is such a cool, it's, I mean, it's hard to see them. It looks so much like a leaf. I know. It's amazing. And the different colors and stuff, just the shades and the spots, because there's never just one color out in nature, right? There's always different colors mm. to blend in with. Oh, we're going to go. Let's see if we can find this critter who is very good at changing the what? coloration. There's a critter in there? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Can you think of what animal this might be? Wow. Find it. There you go, octopus. He's right. Here. Liam says sneaky. Let's see what I'm up. You can kind of see the legs right there. Nice job, Nicole. Coral. Nice right. job. Right. So they blend in with the coral and they can change colors too. And you know, start a moment. I watched a really cool video where the guy was, you know, thought he was going to go pick up a shell and he was reaching for it. And all of a sudden, this octopus just kind of came out. He just changed colors instantly. And all of a sudden, he saw him. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you couldn't see him beforehand. So crazy, crazy. Yeah. Natalie does. She has a question. Um, are insects also animals? They are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Because just like us, we need food, water, shelter, kind of that safety to survive, right? So we have all of, we need all those things. Kind of makes us all animals, right? Great job. Nice. All right. So then there's some active, so ones that can change their body, you know, they have special cells in their body that help them change colors. And some of them, they change for through the seasons. Hmm. They change their colors, maybe in the winter and in the summer. Can you guys think of an animal that changes its color, has a different color in the winter, and a different color in the summer? What do you guys think? There's the snowshoe hair oh, says nice. Philip. Nice. Well, uh, this Arctic fox from Nicole. Nice. There we go. Joey right. says fox as well. Right. So this There's cute a little bunny. In the wintertime, little in the summertime, looks completely different. He looks, mm -hmm. yeah, bigger ears, but he's less fuzzy too. <laughs> it doesn't need as much hair. Oh, 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then, of course, she said Arctic Fox. Oh, right? I love them. I agree, Joey. White. And then that in the sun. Some of them actually, there are some foxes that this is called they call this the blue phase, will stay in this phase all the time, their whole life. So they don't always change out of it. But most of them go from that white to that blue phase. Like this poor guy. He was kind of in the middle, <laughs> middle of the ground. And I'm not burning fully out because he sheds it. He does he's shed. Sadly there, <laughs> I'm covered worse than my cats. <laughs> so yeah, so they have kind of that white and that gray. Blended. Both winter and summer. Yes. Charles with an interesting question asking about chameleons. Yeah. Um, do they change their color via um, because of emotion or because of their surroundings? That's a good question, Charles. And honestly, I don't know. I, don't I think it's know both. a lot about comedians. Comedians. Uh, comedians? Like, <laughs> you know like you. Comedians. You are a comedian. I know about comedians. I don't know a lot about chameleons. <laughs> I've heard both. I've heard that it can yeah. really depend, especially during breeding season. Um, like you see, some birds are brighter. Oh, uh, but yeah. you will see a change in color from them during breeding season. Yeah. But other times as they're walking through spaces, they can do that. They can change that's with good. the space. Mm -hmm. That's cool. See, I learn something new all the time. That's awesome. That's why I love doing this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Charles. Now, our next group, what we call it disruptive coloration, which is a big fancy word, or another word, um, cryptic coloration. Ooh. So we saw, I tried to hide earlier, right? So it's all those animals that have different colors, spots, kind of stripes, Maybe they have like asymmetrical, like body parts or different <laughs> spots and stripes. And I'm like, what else can I wear? What else can I wear? You can do it. You put on one of them, but that wouldn't be disruptive over there. Oh. <laughs> this guy too. So that way, it kind of breaks up their outline, their shape. I know. I'm you look great. Person. You look I know, lovely. I, know. I, know. I, probably, I think Peter's going to call. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> So right, so these spots and these stripes that they have on them, all these different colors and spots help kind of break them up and blend into different situations. So absolutely, so lots of different ways. So they're not just one color, right? A lot of times they're many colors. This is probably one of my favorite birds. <laughs> I just think this group of birds. Liam said you were looking good, by the way. Oh, thank you. They look good in the this is a pretty cool bird. There's a bird in that picture? There's two birds in this picture. Two? Yes. Hmm. Can, Can you I guys find them? two pictures? Find that guy. <laughs> Point to him. Let's see. I can't see him. I got one right here. What? And then right above him. Oh, yeah. I see the oh, eye. And they literally look like the stick. They're, I can't. This. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do it from here? Yes. So here's the eye, yep. and here's the eye, and here's the beak, yep. and there's the beak, and it looks just like the branch. Yeah, isn't that amazing? These are called tawny frog moths. Wow. I just think they're so cool. And they're kind of in the same family as um, we have a, a group of birds here called whippoorwills. Who's ever heard of those? Whippoorwill, 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 whoo. But they look like sticks. And they literally, that's how they do it. They just sit very still, and they make themselves look like a stick. They hold very still. Nicole asked if it was a bird, yes. Yes, it is a bird. Yeah, so these birds are so cool. I just think they're amazing. <laughs> so really good at that cryptic camouflage to help them blend in. Wow. With pretty much anything. And look like a stick. Just like this guy. Hmm? Our next friend. So they have kind of spots and stripes on them to help them blend in hmm. as they move around. And you, but you do know it. I know some days I do not. <laughs> other days I'm like, no. <laughs> Mad happens. skills. Yeah. Can you guys think of some? There's a bad. that have some really good cryptic colorations. Help them get in. Hi, little. Cryptic. Hi, buddy. Cryptic animals that are blending in really well with their surroundings. Knows. Charles says snakes. Oh, yes, they are most. And Joey said a bunch of cool emoticons I can't read. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my emails coming up over it. Let me use this time to go. Here we go. Liam is asking, How do snakes blend in? And you're getting ready to find out, Liam and Joseph. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Things coming up. All right. So, this is King Tut. 
Oh, there you are. Well, hello. <laughs> hi. Say hi, King Tut. Hey, saying hi. He's so cute. <laughs> He's got, I call him a noodle. A noodle because he just kind of sits in my hand like a wet noodle. <laughs> so, King Tut. He likes so his he name. Is an Eastern King Snake. And all those beautiful colors. So he's mostly dark, but he's got these bright, kind of yellowish, creamy kind of stripes and lines all over his body. So that when he's on the ground, because obviously he's not going to be <laughs> a bunch of high out on the ground, so he's going to blend in. So he's going through the forest, and then the forest floor has spots that are light, spots that are dark, spots, you know, so all of that kind of called dappling kind of coloration. And that's going to help him blend in and kind of break up his that line of his body. So it's hard to see him. And so they have all those beautiful spots to help him blend in. I mean, obviously, he stands out next to a bright blue shirt <laughs> on the ground. It would be hard to find in the forest, especially. So Liam or Joseph, you're asking about, and you're always welcome to ask questions like that. It's okay to ask about an animal if they passed away or not. But what animal are you talking about, Liam or Joseph? Uh, King Tut is alive and doing great. Oh, sorry, I hope not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a fair no, question. He's alive. You can see, sticking his tongue out at you. Pretty much active. He just, he acts because <laughs> he's like a limp noodle. Yeah. He just kind of sits very still. He doesn't really, a lot of snakes, they'll kind of wrap themselves around you and they support themselves. I have to support him. <laughs> All of him. So, yeah. King Tut, the name oh, King Tut from Egypt. Oh, okay. I'm like, Mr. Oh, yeah. So that's right. Yeah. So we call him King Tut because he's a king snake. Do you guys know why they're called king snakes? I know you know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, you guys, I think you guys have probably met King Tut before. Why is the king snake called a king, king snake? snake? They are the largest. They're one of our largest Said snakes Phillip? in North Carolina. Absolutely. They're a king, there just says king. Natalie. Natalie kind of comes there we go. Oh, oh here you comes go. Nicole. Nice job. Yeah, they do. They eat all types of snakes, even venomous snakes. What? Right. So they're the king of snakes. Obviously, they can't eat a large, huge venomous snake that's bigger than them, but a smaller, younger one they could eat without a problem. So pretty cool. So that's how they got the name King Snake. So how would you consider, how would you explain and describe them blending into their environment? Um, <laughs> so just the color, color, just color match. Different, right. No, this of. is a, we call it disruptive coloration. So they're not just one color, they're different oh, okay. colors, like the leopard and the jaguar and the um, Tommy Frogmouth you saw. Lots of different colors to kind of help them blend in with our background. Whereas a color match, it's, they're mostly just kind of more one colored kind of thing. I mean, a little bit of, or I should say one shade maybe, or one one type of color, like different shades of brown, <laughs> I'll say, whereas these guys are different colors, more than just one color. I got to learn something so, too. You so, thank yeah, you. So thank you. No, thank you for letting me clarify that. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, you guys have any questions about Mr. Tut? Uh, do we have a snake for him to eat? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, Natalie. Yeah. And then Vicki. Um, uh, at the zoo, yes, they do eat mice and small rats. Uh, we do not feed them um, uh, snakes here at the zoo, uh, but at but um, in the wild, when they're out and about in your backyard, for example, they're they're hunting primarily uh, other snakes. Here, diet is mice and small rats. Right. And they would eat a small a mouse and small rat too in the wild. Oh sure, it's yeah, they're gonna turn their nose up at it. Nope. Or their tongue up at it. Nope. Great questions, guys. Thank you so much for sharing your questions. This has been a great day. Okay, all right, let's see. We got, so that's that type. Mm -hmm. Another type of that disruptive coloration, we can have a couple different colors. And you'll notice a lot of animals have this kind, and somebody mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. So an animal has mm -hmm. a light belly, dark back. Does anybody know? Somebody said it earlier. Charles. Charles, I think, said it earlier. What is that? When you have a yeah. light belly. It's not an owl, bird. Natalie, but it is a bird. For a, lot of, a lot of birds do this. This bird does. Definitely. There you go, Charles. Good. Nicole both. Counter shading. Right. Nice job. You'll see a lot of animals, not just birds, um, sharks, fish, all kinds of different animals, even 
the leopard has darker back, lighter belly. Yeah, <laughs> you can hold that a little bit better. So this is the back that's in the middle, and then this edge would be where the belly is. So it's darker and lighter. So a lot of animals use that kind of powder, powder shade to help them blend in. And that size says penguin. They yeah. are another one that does it. Now, this Absolutely. is not a penguin, right? No, this is a puffin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just to kind of demonstrate, so this puffin spends a lot of time in the ocean, right? Let's set that there. Mm -hmm. And so they're swimming along, swimming along. And if you're, let's say you're a big black back gull and you like to eat puffins, and you're flying up in the sky and you're looking down at the top of the ocean, he's swimming on the ocean where it's dark. And so if your back is dark and your background is dark, I'm going to. Good angle there. It's going to be hard to see them, right? You'll see a little bit, right? But you're in the big, vast ocean. It's kind of hard to see that little white spot. It's not going to make a big difference. But let's say there's a predator under the ocean, right? And they're looking up, up towards the top of the ocean where it's much brighter, the sun and the shining. And so it's very, very bright. So if you have a white belly, you will blend in. That's why they do that counter shade. So it helps them blend in. Thank you very much, Nell. And Natalie says she learns a lot from you all the time. So yeah. thank you very okay, much. Excellent. I'm going to hear that. I learn a lot doing these programs too, because <laughs> I'm creating a lot of new ones all the time. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Pretty cool. So I love doing these. Okay, so Kevin, counter shade. Really good. Cool. Anything else? Counter shade. 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 Counter what animal is it? Should say zebra. Zebra, right? so so. Right. so Philip. The zebra camouflage. If you came across the zebra job. eating in the, the field, um, would you see it? Got some yeses. Yeah. Right. When they're by themselves, right? Pretty easy to see them. But another type of camouflage, we call it a group scare. camouflage. Mm -hmm. Where you put a bunch of them together, it's kind of hard to tell where one starts and the other one begins. So it's very confusing. So predators, a lion coming up there will be like, um, I don't know where to start. So many, <laughs> I think. Oh yeah, I don't know where one is. I don't know where to start. I don't know what part to, you know, attack or which, you know, which animal is which. I don't know. So it's hard. So they would have a really hard time. So it's confusing those animals. And that's a really good way of camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> Philip says your mask. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna. I'm gonna answer a question real quick that can't popped up. Um, we have Liam and Joseph asked, "Do the do the king snakes eat rats?" I was not here, so yes, they will in the wild. They'll take them time to time, uh, Liam, and or Joseph. But um, here at the zoo, they do get fed rats and not snakes. Make sure we clarify that. <laughs> None of us wants to feed in the snake. No, that'd be not a good thing. <laughs> you make snakes. <laughs> Another kind of, it's not really a camouflage, but it is a survival, a way of survival. Surviving, it has to do with colors, is this. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this animal is not going to blend in. Mm -mm. He's very bright. All right, brightly colored. Does anybody know? Charles with a coral. Oh, so, oh, nice. Natalie suggesting this thing again. Snake. Right, here's a coral snake. So why is a coral snake brightly colored? What is he telling you? What, you hmm. what is he telling you? Well, that bright coloration, those bright yellows, bright reds. Charles is venomous. venomous. Absolutely. So Tell he's venomous. venomous. So he's warning and telling other animals back off from venomous. So again, it doesn't help the blend. But Good job, Philip. It does kind of protect them because if he was job, kind of brown um, and all those different colors of other snakes, then other animals would come up and try to eat them more. But because he's got that bright coloration, they're going to see that. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to stay away from this animal and not not test the waters. I kind of like what Joey says. Joey says, "I kill." <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, you're a predator. You're venomous. Absolutely. You're dangerous. I'm dangerous. Or in some cases, I taste really bad. I taste bad. Uh, Vicky asked real quick if you if you run if you're if you she's heard that if you run your hand down the zebra, the stripes are different levels. 
one is maybe a little bit different in feel than the other. I have to say, I've never felt that difference, Vicki, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be for some. I'm like, uh, I, don't feel it. <laughs> I don't feel it either when I've done and I've been lucky enough to, to touch a couple zebras not very many uh, but I did not feel a difference in the stripes I did <laughs> Just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah I mean there might be certain species where the one color might have shorter yeah hair than that could be I'm not sure but it's a good question it is isn't it Ooh, what do you have there <laughs> I got a little friend so this guy you might have met Forrest before Philip says salamander but you notice, just like that coral snake, do you think he's John meant Christina. for blending in? He is. In, Joseph. He is a spotted salamander, right? And spotted salamanders are telling you with those spots, hey, it tastes really good. <laughs> They're kind of warning you off like that coral snake. A little bright coloration. And a little bit of blending in too, because they do come out at night mostly. So you're not really gonna see those bright yellows at night either. But during the daytime, if somebody like kind of lifts up a stump, which is where you find spotted salamanders, they like to live under logs and stumps. And that's why his name is Forrest Stump. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. So um, that bright color says, hey, back off, leave me alone. He's not poisonous, but he does have a bad taste to him if you were to eat him. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. I didn't hear what you said. This is a what kind it's of salamander? Spotted. Because it's not obvious. Well, right? yeah, how about that? Because <laughs> he's got spots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is he a boy or a girl? I don't know. Is Forrest a boy or a girl? Forrest is a boy. Is he a boy? Okay. He's a male. I thought so. But I wasn't sure. It's not rude. It's okay. He doesn't mind. <laughs> All right. So different colorations. So kind of a twofold with them. So they have some that kind of warn other animals, say, hey, I taste bad, don't eat me. Others just to kind of help them blend in. Mm -hmm. So being the dark. So at night you can't see colors. And so when he's active at night and moving around, he won't be able to see those kind of yellow spots, but he'll be dark until he blends in too. So ah, his colorations help in a dual way. Christina asked, what's the gloop on them? What's the gloop on them? Like this stuff right here? So he, was assume, in, so. Oh, sorry, he's so he was in some, uh, I'll show you his bed. A nice cozy bed full of nice moist moss mm -hmm. we had in there for him. So we spray it with nice clean water. Mm -hmm. Put him in there because he's getting a little more active. So it's his travel tote. Right, this is his travel home. Cool. And so we get it nice and wet in there for him. And I have a nice little uh, house. That he can hide under. <laughs> That's awesome. And so he can feel nice and cozy like it's at night. <laughs> <laughs> or in the daytime, they would be under a, a log, right? And hiding, doing their job. Good animal care. Super, super. They are, uh, you can find these type of salamanders here in North Carolina. They do, are they in North the Mountains? I believe so, yeah. So more towards the mountains. But yeah. So those are all the different kinds of what we call it, disruptive coloration. Hmm. My favorite category, let's see, let's see if you guys know what this big science, fancy science word Uh-oh. Mimicry. What? What does that mean? Mimicry. Mimicry. If I mimic something. So if I mean? mimic something. <laughs> and you mimic me. You mimic, 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 mimic. <laughs> <laughs> mimic me. They are repeating, They're so repeating says more. Philip. <laughs> yes, Nikki and I are repeating it. Exactly right. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Good. All right. All right, so it can appear to be something that they're not, right? So they mimic other things. They, we mimic each other's voices, you know, that kind of thing, and it sounds, but animals might mimic and look like other things, like Whoa. this guy, right? What is he mimicking? What does he look like? With a bug. A leaf. He's making his own. So it like says Philip. So that's why it's called. Vicky with a leaf. leaf insect. Oh, that's that's very descriptive. <laughs> I know. <laughs> or you might look like. Ooh. Job, Nicole. Whoa. This guy. That's big. Let's see if I can get a better look. Nicole says a stick. A stick, right? <clears throat> so insects that look like sticks. Pretty good Philip camouflage. With a stick bug. It looks like I'm not looking like something else. 
So when you look like something else, like a stick or a leaf, or in this case, what bird is poop. that? <laughs> Why did you bring a picture of bird poop? I did. I brought a picture of a caterpillar. No, you didn't. That's oh. bird poop. Oh, it's a caterpillar. Okay. Look at that. That's the side right there. No kidding. Oh. So if you look like a stick, you look like a leaf, or you look like a bird poop, <laughs> other animals are not going to want to eat you, right? I'm not going to eat that. Either way, if you look like something that is maybe non edible, <laughs> you're less likely to be eaten. So pretty cool way. So mimicking is actually pretty. pretty <laughs> Nicole says that is not a flattering picture. No. <laughs> but it is what they are. Yeah. Um, another kind of mimicry too is this guy. You just had that one. Oh, I did not. You sure? Yeah. Huh. I'll bring the other one out. Okay. Are we from here? Sure. Okay. I don't know. Remember, this one was oh, oral. Oh, it is different. And uh, this one looks a lot like them, right? They same. knew. Right. Not Natalie and same. Joey knew it wasn't the same. You guys know the saying. So this guy, who is not venomous, has kind of like those same colors, red, black, and yellow of the coral snake. The black, um, they says it's both black and red touching is something with the, with the poem, it says. Right. Nice job, red next to yellow, kill a fellow. Whoa. Red next to black, friend of Jack. So red next to yellow, kill a fellow. Red next to black, friend of Jack. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Only happens in the United States. So don't do that. Don't go over across the country and use that saying because you may know. You might end up picking up a venomous snake. <laughs> So that way, other animals will see those red three colors and be like, oh, it's venomous and they'll be more. Wow. And then we make that. Even though they're not, they're a king snake. So they can eat other snakes. I think they can eat other coral snakes too, right? I would imagine. If they're in the same area. Where are these guys found? They're found a little bit more north. The okay. coral snakes a little bit more south. And they're all in North Carolina coastal plains, you know. So they can oh, they are found coastal plains. Where these okay. That's a pretty cool way of mimicking, right? That's so neat. like something completely else. It's a great way to camouflage. Our last one, call it self decoration, mm -hmm. which means <laughs> self decoration? Right. Here. Okay. Self decorating. Blend in. Are you going to self decorate? It's self decorating, yes. <laughs> <I'll> self decorate. <laughs> <laughs> so you take stuff from your environment, your home, to make yourself blend in. Okay. Whoa. So we took all that, that we, I think it's called duckweed that you find in the pond, those tiny, tiny little green, almost like little lily pads. It's kind of cute. And he just kind of has them all over his back. Wow. Helps him blend in. My favorite self decorator. Just <laughs> sounds funny. This guy. That's a, what is that? I don't know. I don't know. That's so cool. <laughs> it is a neat turtle right, picture. Right. Oh, so this yeah. guy says a fly. is an insect. He's called a caddisfly. So you're a fly. Oh, you're a fly. it is a caddisfly. Good job, Philip. So it is an insect that spends its most of its life underwater, actually, in the bottom of a pond. And so he glues a shell of the sand, dirt, sticks, whatever's on the bottom of the pond to, you know, he makes kind of like a tube and then he kind of hides in it. Wow. From camouflage. And it's really cool. I should have, I forgot to bring the picture. Um, yeah, Steve's wife actually has some of this. They put um, a caddis fly <laughs> in an aquarium with like pearls and pieces of gold and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they made jewelry. And when, when the caddis fly grew up and became an adult and left his little tube, you now have a piece of jewelry and you can make jewelry out of it. So cool. <laughs> I think they're pretty cool animals. Uh, Natalie, just keep practicing your spelling, young lady. You'll be fine. It's okay to not know all the words right now. She said she's not a good speller, and that's, that's quite okay. all right. Just keep on, keep on, keep trying. Absolutely. I belong to spell so much. <laughs> Thank goodness for the interest of Yeah. All right, I'm going to turn this aside really quick. Hey. <clears throat> Sorry, Steve. <laughs> this I can't, is really I can't see it now. Oh, it's <laughs> right. All right. So, there are some different cool ways that animals camouflage. So, let's see who are the true artists. So I'm gonna kind of screen share and we'll do a little PowerPoint. Hopefully I can get it to work. Dun, not da, so da, da. With the technology. You got this, Nikki. You got this. Let's see. 
All right, guys. Can you guys see this okay? It looks like they can. All right. Um, oh, you're going to have to look at chat on the wall. I, I can't chat. see chat. How do I see chat on here? Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Technical issues. Um, close. Go to chat. There you go. Awesome. Thank very you. Good. Thank you, you very much, Nikki. Nikki helping me out a little bit. Okay. So you look at this amazing picture. You'll see there's three different kinds of sections. Are you sectioned off? Tell me which section the animal's in. Is it A, B, or C? And type that in chat. It's got to be B. B from Christina, B from Philip, B, B from Christina again, B from Nicole, Anna, B, Nikki, yeah. B, Christina, B, Joe, or Philip says B. <laughs> Christina, B, 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 B. Lots of Bs. <laughs> Natalie, okay. B. Let's see. You're right. Absolutely. So, moth. Really good camouflage, though. Isn't that amazing? I just think that's fascinating. A lot of insects are such good camouflagers. Looks like they nailed that one. Now, this one, that blows me away. You'll probably see it right away, but. It's just crazy that a large animal can be good at camouflage. All right. So what animal do we have? A, B, or C? Which section? Nicole C, Christina C, Natalie C, Philip C, C, Joe C, Joey C, Philip C, Anna C, Nicole C, Joey C, 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 coming across the board. Right. Look at you, a giraffe. 18 feet tall. Yeah, a several thousand pound animal can blend in. So crazy. I love that picture. That one just, I just adore. Vicki and Natalie agree with you. Yeah, pretty cool. All right. A little bit harder. All right, guys. So this one is which most of the body is in one section. So A, B, or C. Got some Bs. Vicki, okay. Phil, Nicole, eyes, Christina, <laughs> Joey, Natalie. Bs across the board. B for birds, says Nicole. Joey. Hey, Mecca with a B. Right. So nice Anna. Job, yeah. Absolutely. So that um, nice job, guys. She has a, 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 a Tony Frog. Tony Frog. Thank, Thank you. There you go. You're Thank you. Two friends of four. That they're related to them, as you can see. They just look like sticks or just amazing camouflage. Mm -hmm. So cool All right, let's see the next one. <laughs> You're welcome. This cool. one, where you are which section is the head located? Which section Where's is the head? The head. The head located. All right, no guesses yet. Oh, comes some C's from Joey. Joey with a lot of C's. Anna with a C, Christina with a C, Joey with a C, C, Vicky with a C. Wow, I am nowhere near. Mecca with a C. <laughs> Holy, I think, I think the answer is C, Nikki. I could be wrong here, but I think it's C. Right. Madagascan All right. leaf-tailed gecko. But I can't That's even where find the, the head was. body. It's crazy. That's, I mean, looks like a piece of lichen. If it wasn't for the eyes, I think that's what gives it away a lot of times. Job's the, the, the eyes being open. If he had closed his eyes, the cold said that one was tough. Yeah, it would be hard. It'd be hard to find. All right, this is a tough one. Uh oh. A, oh. B, or C? Whoa, I would love to be there wherever that is. <laughs> Paula with a B, or Paul, not, not Paula, sorry, but that Liam with a B. Vicky said she got it last minute last time. Uh, Paul, uh, no, it's a no C on that one. A, says Christina. Got some B's and some A's in this time. Yeah. Christina and yeah. Philip saying they're doing Mecca with a with an A. Natalie come back with a C. Joey with Joe. Nicole. I don't know. <laughs> Here's some oh, A's. Yeah. Vicky with an A. Joey with an A with some A's. I think it's once you see it, you can't. You, you can't Liam see said it now, Liam said B. Mecca A. B, a. Yo, this one's all over the board. Takia C. Joe or Philip says A. All right, let's check it out. That's your snow leopard. What? Isn't that crazy? Holy uh, cow. Yeah, it looks like a rock. <laughs> Who knew? A snow rock. <laughs> Liam's like, oh, wow. I know. Isn't that crazy? I love that. <laughs> so it right. looks like a rock. All right. A, B, or C. You want to find this critter? Look tight. Nicole, just on there. Liam says C. Christina says C. Joey says C. Anna C. Takia. I didn't see hers. It went too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Mecca says C. Uh, Philip says C. All right, you guys got it. Nice. You had better eyes than I did. It took me a while when I first saw this picture. And I think this is uh, gross. <laughs> Vicky says, I see it too. Uh, uh, nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a sage grouse. I don't really know. <laughs> I couldn't find where it was and I kind of looked at what I thought it was. So it may not be. Don't take it for it. It's some kind of grouse. <laughs> There's a little grouse. It's grousey. Grousey. This one's pretty cool. Uh oh, another one. A, what do you guys got? A, B, or C? B from Christina. She was quick. Joey says B. There's some B's here. Nicole says B. And Vicky says B. 
Bill says B, Joey with B's. Now imagine. Um, there's some more were, B's. Anna says B. You're standing uh, up Joey. at your height and looking down at leaves. Mecca with a B. Would you guys see this animal? Because you guys got it right away. Nice Liam job. with a B. Pink belly moth. But look at it. I mean, it's even got the line, like the middle of the leaf does. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, that's awesome. So yeah. So, but could you imagine? Would you see it if you were like, you know, we're up zoomed in close to it, but yeah. if you were up at your height, your eyes were up normal, you're standing and looking down. <laughs> Vicky, I would have stepped on. I would have stepped on. Oops. I would have stepped it. Uh, Christina well, thinks she might have seen it. it That's cool. Good, it's probably the drawback of having a really good <laughs> stepped on. It's a, you know, obviously animals can't see you, so you might get stepped on. All right. <laughs> I just had to throw that one in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go go for it, guys. Charles with a B, Vicky with a B, Nicole with a B, Christina with a B. Yeah, yeah. Right, Philip, Liam. <laughs> Joey with bees, Anna with the bees, Joe with bees. I think you nailed it. I love it, says Philip. Charles, it's only one color. I can see it. I know. All right, so this one find the head. Looking for the head, guys. Looking for the head. Christina A, Philip A, Joey A, Mecca B, Joey A, Philip. Paula, oh, not Paula, I keep saying Paula. Sorry about that, guys. As I see, I read it on the screen. Liam said uh, A, A, Vicky says A, Joey says A. Nicole says it's a cool pick, but didn't give us a guess. <laughs> Mecca with a B, <laughs> Anna with an A, Natalie with an A. <laughs> Nicole came back and said A. So good. I say mostly A's, but you had a couple B's thrown in there. Yeah. All right. There it Charles is. said, I'll oh, mainly B. Yeah. So pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see the cursor. So there's his head. I think Takiya, good job. Back, it's kind of on the spine. And then that's his tail. Wow. I guess that's so cool. Obviously, well named. <laughs> so they feel gecko. That makes sense. Philip says he sees the eye, and that's how he knew yeah, where it was. Yeah, that's, that's that kind of the giveaway. Sometimes. Yeah, it is. Oh, well, there's some animals that have really good eye camouflage. I mean, they just close their eyes and just they disappear. Yep. Yeah. All right. A, B, or C. Whoa. Natalie, I don't know. We'll keep going until, until Nikki says we're done. She asked it was the last one. We don't know. Yeah, we'll keep on going. I think I'm Joey with C's. I only did 10 of them, so I don't know what Mecca with the B, Joey C's. I can't see any more right now. Vicky C, Liam C, Christina C, Paula C, or not Paula, uh, <laughs> Liam C. <laughs> Looks like C. C is winning this battle. All right, you are right. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Where's that leopard? That camouflage, those spots and stripes really help them to blend in. Crazy. That's it. All right. There you go. Yeah. Good job. That was fun. Nice job, Nikki. Cool. That was great. All right. Good job. You guys have much better insight than I do. Because I'm old and my eyes are going bad. So, <laughs> here's what I know. I'm good right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just with the close ups. <laughs> so I just think camouflage is truly amazing and it, it has it has saved lots of animals lot their lives and helps them survive in so many different ways and find food and hide from food or hide from predators that kind of thing. So pretty cool way of being able to survive, right? And some of your digital friends enjoyed the game. Yeah, a lot of that was fun, a lot of I like that game, fun, fun, fun. fun. So glad you guys did. I was have fun doing it. I was like, where is it? Where is it? Some of them, I'm like, they don't show you. So I'm looking at them and I can never find them. So I'm like, all right, well, I can't use that one because. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't that, find, it. find it. So, yeah, so that was a winner. Yeah, Google Images, like um, animal camouflage. It's a really cool, amazing animal out there. That I do that. All right, guys, do you guys have any questions for Steve and I? Throw them in the oh, chat because I don't have a QA and a box open right now. So if you have a question, throw it in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> great day today. Great job going back and forth with questions and comments, team. Yes. I appreciate it. It's been great. Anna, oh, <laughs> Anna, like right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just go, like go and Google animal, you know, Takiya images says, of animal and You'll find some really cool. You'll be able to play the game there. <laughs> Takiya, I hope <laughs> I'm pronouncing. Nice, oh. There are probably some cool websites where you can find that game. I'm sure there's lots of places that show you different camouflage and see cool. if you can find the animals. I hope, I hope I'm getting Takiya's name pronounced right. I hate to not pronounce it right. Do cats camouflage from Natalie? Oh, yeah. Pretty much all cats do. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, maybe not our house cats. 
So, but based on that, the next flop is uh, from uh, Liam or Joe. Why do leopards and cheetahs look the same? Well, why do you guys think? Why do you think they would have spots and kind of the coloration? They're from, one's from Africa, one's from South America. Hmm. But how does that help them? Thank you, Nicole. Right? So those spots and those colorations work well. Right? So why not? <laughs> if it works, what makes it? So I kind of a lot of cats have spots, stripes, um, and kind of brown, brown colorations, that kind of thing. So really good at camouflaging and hiding so they can sneak up and pounce on their prey. Do you think that'd be the same thing for penguins in the Antarctic and the puffins and the murres, other animals from the Ar from the Arctic? It would just work. So yeah, exactly. Or a lot of animals across the whole world. Have that counter shading. Yeah. Like I said, all over the world, you'll find that nice job, Charles. light belly, dark back. So yep. a really good way. That's probably almost a universal camouflage kind of. <laughs> so lots of animals have. I that. like that. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. Did we get all <laughs> Vicky, the questions? Vicky, I might not ever walk in the woods of Africa. <laughs> Don't go by yourself, oh, Vicky. Don't go by yourself. <laughs> well, you might have some eyes. You might have some eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Oh, well, I must mention. So uh, next week we are doing our trivia. So if you guys want to come play games, we're going to play Jeopardy. More <laughs> trivia. And then just to let you guys know, so we're kind of. Um, I, I need more time to start working on other things around the zoo. So we're actually kind of yes, Natalie. Phasing ourselves out of the zoo classroom. So thank you, Takia. I, we've got one next week. Then in February we're going to have. Um, well, one zoo classroom, one free zoo classroom, and that's going to be on the 25th, and it's going to be our last one. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm going to miss you guys. But we still have that creature connections that we're going to be doing every the second Thursday of every month at 3 o'clock. And again, it is a, a feed one. Um, I'm probably going to jump in and start helping Leslie with it. So if mm -hmm. you want to come see me, you can join us and, and chat for those. Yay, Nikki. Just want to let you guys know that, yeah, so we're going to phase back so that way I can start doing other things and... Um, we're going to start camping out here at the zoo, <laughs> hopefully, kind of bring, uh, you know, because the COVID, COVID has kind of hit the zoo hard financially, so we're trying to bring different ways to bring money into the zoo so we can keep running, so. We'll miss you, Philip. So, yeah. So, but I want to thank you guys who stuck it out for so long. So, hopefully, we'll, you'll join us next week, and then the 25th of February will be our last one, so. Just want to put that out there for you guys. Yeah, that's a zoo classroom, but, they, you, zoo but the creature connections continue. Yeah. Cool. Okay, good. I got it. Yeah, you got it. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. I will hopefully see you guys next week and we'll get your trivia hats on. Get I ready. Are, but <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Y'all be good. Care. Bye now. We'll see you next week.